nothing more relaxing than sitting there on the couch, snuggled up in your blanket, listening to the sounds of raindrops falling on your roof, until you realize you forgot to bring your fabric in. Hello, I'm Lelena with Thimble and Plume, and we are historical costumers. We have a love for sharing the things that we've learned over the years in order to empower you to become the best costumer you can be. So I suppose I should start from the beginning. A few weeks ago, I decided I wanted to make myself a new shirt. First, I washed my fabric. Ideally, you want to wash the fabric in the same way that you plan on caring for the garment once it's completed. It's fine to wash linen in the washing machine and you can throw it into the dryer, but putting it through that hot air oftentimes will break down the fiber faster over time. And it also comes out kind of wrinkled. So I typically prefer air drying on a line. So I was taught that it's very important that the first time you wet your fabric, you want it to be as flat as possible when it's sitting in the water. So what I like to do is first I'll fill up my bathtub with about five inches or so of the hottest water that comes out of my tap. And then I will slowly lower the fabric onto the water, keeping it as flat as possible. If I have to fold it, I'd like to do some big lofty folds instead of hard crisp folds and I allow it to get wet and then I let it sit in the hot water for a bit. Once that's done, you can go ahead and throw this in the wash. But I live in an apartment and so carrying that wet dripping fabric all the way to the machine is not really an option. So I'm just gonna hand wash it in my tub. I just throw in some laundry soap and then I'll agitate it a bit. I just want to get the sizing out and agitate it some so that it will shrink as much as possible. I'll then rinse it and I press the water out. Now, I don't want to wring it too much because I don't want to create additional wrinkles that are harder to get out. And since I'm going to be smocking this shirt, I will be starching it next, so I'm not going to leave it to air dry yet. So let's talk about starch. Now, starching the linen for your shirt is really important if you're going to be doing any sort of smocking or embroidery or pleating of any type. That's because A, it makes the fabric easier to work with. It makes it a little stiffer for when you put those pleats in, which makes it easier to put the embroidery on top. And also it protects your fabric from the oils that are in your hands and on your tabletops and whatever other thing might get onto it as you're working on it. So for the construction phase, I like to do a medium to heavy starch. I prefer to use liquid starch and you can either purchase it or you can make your own. For purchase starch, I prefer this Purex Stay Flow liquid starch. This is a corn-based starch and I've used it very often in the theater and it does a really good job of starching the clothing without giving it a yellow tinge. For this, I want to do a heavier starch for the construction phase. So I'm just going by the directions on the bottle here. I am starching a smaller piece of fabric so I can get away with about a gallon of water, which means I need about a cup of starch. What I do is I put the starch in the water, let it mix, place the fabric in the starch and make sure it covers the fabric nicely. I've never found that I need to let it sit for a very long amount of time. So I'll pull it out of the starch, press the starch out of it with my hands and then hang it to dry. So now let's talk about making your own starch, which is definitely a more historically accurate option. One of our Sew Along members, Anna Van Visa, has been doing research into 16th century starch methods. And she was kind enough to allow me to use her information in this video. So I will also link to her website below so you could go check that out on her blog. Her research shows that most 16th century starches would have been made from cereal based starches such as wheat. So I decided this was the way I wanted to starch my fabric and I just followed her instructions. She gives several choices for starch types and I decided to try wheat starch. I have about two and a half gallons of water in my pot to boil and her instructions say I should use one third to one half cup per gallon. I also plan to starch the fabric in the tub and I will add probably another two gallons. So I ended up using one and a half cups which would put me about midway between the recommended amount. The starch is first dissolved in a bit of tap water and then that is added to the boiling water. There's definitely a change in viscosity pretty quickly. I allowed it to boil for a short amount of time and then it seemed, it looked good to me. I pulled it off the stove, added additional cool water to the tub and dumped the starch in. I then added my freshly washed damp fabric into the starch, swished it around and let it sit for about 10 minutes. I then wrung it out 
careful not to create additional wrinkles and I hung it up to dry. I let it sit for about an hour before I decided to move it outside. I pulled and smoothed the fabric to get rid of as many wrinkles as possible. Remember, it will always dry in the condition you leave it in. So it's best to get rid of as many wrinkles at this stage as you can. So I originally planned to allow the fabric to dry until it was just a little bit damp, at which point I would have brought it in to press it. But then I promptly forgot that I had left it outside. Cue mother nature and cue the worst rainstorm we've had this season. So this just happened. The one, I left my fabric out <laughs> and the one time it decides to rain in Southern California, it rained over all over my fabric that was just dry. Oh, hooray, hooray, hooray. So word to the wise, make sure that uh, if you put your fabric out to dry, that you take it in before it rains. So now it's hanging in my bathroom to dry again, but I need to finish this video. And fortunately, I did have that small piece of fabric that I used to demonstrate starching in the purchased starch. So I'm going to use that to complete this video. So there shouldn't be many wrinkles left at this point and you should have a nice crisp finish to your fabric. So you'll want to press it. And when you're pressing it, you want to use high heat and steam, which is why you wanted to leave it damp because that allows for additional steam. But if you find that your fabric is too dry, you can always spritz it with some water. So now our fabric is all pressed and nice and crisp. So let's move on to the next step. Oftentimes your fabric will end up getting pulled off grain and it's usually during the manufacturing process or when they're being rolled onto bolts. It could have been when you were washing it or as it was laid out to dry. So you want to true your fabric to make sure that your warp fibers and your weft fibers are square to each other. In order to do this, we want to make sure that we have a straight edge. Since this is linen, in order to get a straight edge, I pull a thread from the weft. This leaves a line in the fabric that I can follow when I cut it. Please don't ever tear linen fabric because it really does warp those edges. You should see an empty space where you pulled that thread so you can just cut along that line. Once that's done, you want to make sure that your fabric is square. So I'm going to lay it on my grid. I'm going to fold my fabric so these selvage edges to the selvage edge and the cut edges are lined up. I want everything to line up and lay flat and I want it to be square. So I'm gonna look at this. I'm gonna look for areas where I'm not square, where my fabric doesn't line up with each other. I will then pull at the areas that are short or not quite meeting along the bias in order to pull them into place. Now linen is pretty forgiving, so I can usually do it without applying heat. So my next step for the shirt is pattern and layout, but that's another video that's scheduled for next week, but I'll put it up here when it's out. So make sure to subscribe and sign up for notifications so that you'll be notified when it comes out. In the meantime, here's a video all about wool that's available today that would be appropriate for 16th century clothing.